would be enriched beyond measure. And we just thank you for everything. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this church. We thank you for our leaders, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you would be blessed. You would be blessed by what transpires this evening. And I pray also, Lord God, that you would override whatever preparation I have made. And I pray, Lord God, that I would just be your instrument in bringing, bringing your word, Lord God, tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, our topic for this evening is about wisdom, or more specifically, having a lifestyle of wisdom. So, if you have your Bibles, or if you do not have your Bibles, uh, our, our verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. I'll just read very quickly, Pono. My son... Keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Okay, thoughts about wisdom. Proverbs is a book. But if you've nabasa na po ba yung Proverbs? Nasa ba yung na yun ng Bible? No? It's a collection of sayings na in uh, uh, mostly was, was, was a collection of sayings, of wise sayings written by Solomon. Right? Mostly by Solomon. Or, although, you know, there are other writers who have written the book of Proverbs. So contributed to the book of Proverbs. But right now, we'd like to, we'd like to um, concentrate on how to apply wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? All right? What is wisdom? More so in our discussion of the lifestyle of being wise, the lifestyle of wisdom. Ibig po sabihin, ano? Ibig po sabihin, um, yung pamumuhay pang araw-araw na merong karunungan. All right? The lifestyle of wisdom, right? Now, what are the marks of a wise man? What are the marks of a wise man? I'd like to concentrate on three things. I'd like to concentrate on three things, okay? First is humility. The second is a listening heart. Third is courage. Right? Just to keep it simple, the marks of a wise man. And as as we you know, as we discuss this, right? As we as we talk about it, you know, ask yourself or tanungin yung sarili niyo. Sa isa niyo lang, is this me? Or where am I in this? Or nasan ba ako sa pamantayan na to? All right, because we will be talking about you know the standards of scripture, the standards of God. Where am I in this? Where am I? So as we discuss, think about it. San ba ako dito? Para makita natin kung san tayo kailangan magimprove. Para makita natin kung san pa ako kailangan lumago. Okay, right? Just let's just be honest. With ourselves because you know if you do not know what the problem is then you will not find a solution remember but solution hindi malam yung problema and if you do not acknowledge what the problem is so 99% of the solution to a problem is knowing what the problem is and admitting that you have that right so you know here be honest with yourself and you know let's just let's just discuss the marks of a wise man. first of all of course it's humility right now proverbs chapter 12 verse 23 says this wise people don't make a show of their knowledge but fools broadcast their folly Okay? Sa Tagalog po, sa Tagalog po, Tagalog, Tagalog po ng konti, ang 
taong may wisdom, may karunungan, okay? Hindi sila okay, hindi sila hindi nila pinagmamayabang yung karunungan nila, right? But fools broadcast their their folly. Ibig sabihin, ang taong walang karunungan, siya yung madada. Okay? Siya yung madada. Okay, so now, think, who am I here? Who am I here? So think. Alright, now. Alright, now. James chapter 3 verse 13 says this. Basahin ko lang po na mabilis, no? Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the, the truth. This is not wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy, jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of, of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Mga kapatid, one of the marks of a true follower of God, of a true follower of Jesus Christ, one of the marks of a true Christian is always humility. Humility. Ano pong humility? Anong kabaliktaran ng humility? Ang kabaliktaran. Ha? Proud? Yes, yes, yes. Or, sa galog, kayabangan. Right? One of the sure ball marks that a person is not a true follower of Jesus is kayabangan. Right? Kayabangan. And here, if you look at here, so James chapter, ano, chapter, chapter 3, no, sabi niya dito, sabi niya dito, Who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. Ito po ang dito. This is not... The wisdom that comes from God, from above. But, ito po ah, this is earthly, unspiritual, and I'd like to underline this, demonic. I'd like to emphasize those that word. Right? If this talks about, about, you know, about being arrogant and having, you know, and having a boastful heart. It is what? Earthly? unspiritual and demonic. Right? Grabe, no? Akala mo, humility lang is, 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 you know, is like, you know, eh, kala natin, yung know, parang, uy, humble, no? dapat humble tayo. Akala natin, it's something very easy to do. We think it's very easy to do. And, and we think that, you know, if, if you're mayabang or if you're, prideful, sabi nga, hindi siya ano eh, hindi siya, pang kung ma-pride ka, hindi naman siya yung parang kasalanan na, oy hindi ako nag, nag-nakaw, hindi ako nag, nag, nagpatag pumatay ng tao. Diba? So, pili mo, kung, kung ma-pride ka, okay lang yun. Okay lang magyabang ng konti. But the Bible says this, it is what? Sabi mo, sabi mo, Sino yung, what, what is, what is, what was Lucifer's sin? What was Satan's sin? The root of why he fell, what was it? Pride. It was pride. Ganun kalaki. Ganun kagrabe. Ganun na lang yung tingin ng Panginoon sa pride. Ganun kasama. Right? Something that we think, oh, you know, that's one of the big lies. Yan ang isa sa, sa mga malaking kasinungalingan. 
is that you know pride is okay pride is not harmful pride is you know hindi ka naman nakakasakit ng ibang tao di ba ganun right but pride pride is like cancer slowly it eats you up that was satan's sin that was his first thing that it was his first thing that caused him to fall and it's not a coincidence that it is also one of the marks of a false Christian is someone who is prideful. Hindi makorek. Hindi teachable. Di ba? Mas, mas magaling ako. Mas maalam ako sa iyo. Hindi ba magaling yan? Ako, ganto ko. Ako, ganyan ako. Ha! Ako, nagbigay ako ng ganto palaki. Ako, ganyan. Ako, ganto. You know, we can be prideful with, with, with a small thing. We can be prideful with that. But the Bible is teeming with scriptures. Teeming with, 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 with words on how arrogance is of the devil. Of how pride will bring your downfall. Right? One of the true marks of a true Christian is humility, humility, being humble. Nasaan ka dun? Check, check, check. Pag ako ba napapagsabihan, anong reaction ko? Ako ba ay, you know, lagi nagmamagaling? Ako ba ay, feeling ko ba mas magaling ako lagi sa katabahan namin? Ako ba? Ay ganito. Ako ba? Ay ganito. Check. Check it. Only you know. Alright? So that's the first one. Humility. The second thing that I'd like to discuss is a wise man listens. It's a good listener. A good listener. Again, James. Chapter 1, verse 19 says this. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Madaming ano, madaming tao kapag ano ba ako, mag-uusap kayo, ano? Usap kayo. Ah, oh, usap lang, ganyan, ganyan. Madaming, madami ako na-encounter ba, ma, na, 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 baka usap tayo, ganyan, ganyan. Nakikita mo, kapag pagka-usap kayo, na hindi siya nakikinig, iniisip niya lang kung ano yung sasabihin niya next. Diba? Parang nag-uusap ko, yun, pare, ganyan, ganyan, ganto, ganto, tas siya ba? Pero alam mo, ganto, ganyan, ganyan, eh. Alam mo, hindi ka pa tapos, meron na kagad, alam mo, walang nag-sync in dun sa sinabi niyo. Now, the thing is, a wise person, all right, a wise person is quick to listen. A wise person always thinks that, hey, maybe the other person has something else to say. You know, a wise man, I found this really nice quote. About wisdom, he says this. A wise man once said nothing. A wise man once said nothing. Why? A wise man knows that he doesn't know enough. Yes, yeah. A foolish person thinks he knows everything. Alam ko lahat. Magaling ako. Talo ko kayong lahat. A wise man knows that there is more wisdom on earth than he can understand. A wise man knows that a lot of people's experiences he hasn't experienced. Mo ako, di ko naman mga na-experience, mga na-experience ni Nanay Salih. 
Ibig sabihin, si Nanay Sabi, meron siya mga kwento na pwede kong pagpulutan ng aral. Tama? Right? So a wise man knows that everyone has a story that he can learn from. Right? Alam mo yun? At ang foolish, yun yung, hindi, alam ko to, alam ko to. Huwag niyo kong pangarolan. Alam ko to. Eh? Ganun daw ang foolish man. So, be careful of someone who talks too much. Normally, magkadik- magkadikit yan. Yung walang humility o yung mayamang tapos yung sobrang maldali. Normally, magkadikit po yan. Ako po, madaldag po ako, Amy. <laughs> Pero, you know, gano'n po ako simula bata. <laughs> Just kidding. It's, 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 a, it's a joke of mine. But I have to correct myself in that. Right? That maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes I talk too much. Right? Maybe sometimes I ought to listen more. Right? Maybe sometimes I ought to, you know, to shut up and hear what the other person has to say. Maybe sometimes my tongue is too quick. Shad mabilis hindi lako. Right? I have to correct myself there. Right? Right? Why? Because Proverbs chapter 14 verse 3 says this. This is really quick. Ito po ah. Ito po. Kung meron tayong maalala, maalala ngayon na may lang na verse. Sobrang ikli po nito. Medyo mahaba po yung mga verses na binasa natin kanina. I'm sure hindi nyo po yung mamemorize ng ganun kabilis. Dahil mahaba po talaga siya. Kung meron kayong mamemorize na ngayon lang, okay, uh, na, kung meron kayong maintindihan at mamemorize na isang likeling verse, ito na lang po. Cha- Proverbs chapter 14 verse 3. Proud fools talk too much. Oh, bali, di ba? Hindi kailangan ng ano. Bilis. May imagine mo kagad. Proud fools talk too much. Okay? Proud fools talk too much. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 3. Right? So, kung ayaw mo maging proud fool, zip, zip, listen. Listen. You know, sometimes in prayer, sometimes when we pray, we talk too much. Sometimes when we pray, we have so many words for God. Na pag sinuri mo yung words natin, lahat ako. Lord, bigyan mo ako nito. Lord, bigyan mo ako niyan. Lord, bigyan mo ako nito. Lord, kailangan ko ng ganyan. Lord, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Lord, alam mo kung ganito lang yung buhay ko, okay, sana eh. Lord, kung ganito lang yung ano, ganito, sana, ganyan, ganyan. Ba't hindi mo ito ginawa, Lord? Lord, may kampo ko sa'yo eh. Kasi ganito, ganyan, ganyan, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Grabe tayo magdada sa Panginoon. Lord, Lord. Ikaw, kung ikaw si Lord, anong gagawin mo? Sabi nyo, Ang ingay mo. Right? We, we talk too much sometimes. And we don't, we don't, paminsan din natin napapansin na ayabang natin sa harap ng Panginoon. Alam mo yun? Na, 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 you know, you know, na parang pwede natin siyang lecturean. Parang, Lord, kung ganito yung ginawa mo ng buhay ko, kung ganito lang yung pagkakagawa mo, okay sana eh. Right? We, 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 we suggest things for God. We, you know, we, we impose things on God. We tell God what to do. As if we know better. Right? As if we know better. You know, the thing is, if, if you just look at the night sky, if you just look at the night sky, if you see the stars in the night sky, you know, you see the stars are small, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, you know, it's small, small stars. Feeling was small yung star. Okay? You know, one of those stars that's there, it's so big, 
na hindi kanya lalamunin. Alam ko ano lalamunin niya? Hindi niya lalamunin yung mundo. Alam ko ano lalamunin niya? Hindi na niya lalamunin yung araw. Alam mo ano lalamunin niya? Yung buong solar system simula dito hanggang Pluto. Ganun siya kalaki. Alam niyo kung gano'ng kahaba ang, ang ano? May pinadala tayong probe pa kung saan Pluto. Ano yung probe? Yung spaceship. Okay? May pinadala tayo. Walang tao doon, of course, wala. Pinadala natin. Sobrang bilis noon. Sobrang yung bilis. Kasi yung layo ng Pluto eh. Sabi ng mga sinumang, sabi ng NASA, gusto natin magpadala ng probe sa Pluto. Kasi wala pang, wala pang spaceship na kapag sa Pluto. So, padala tayo. Kaya lang sobrang layo. Kailangan natin bilisan. Yung sobrang, 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 sobrang bilis. So, nagpadala sila ng probe na sobrang bilis. Alam mo yung gano'ng katagal? Sampung taon. Literally, sampung taon. Simula dito hanggang Pluto. Sobrang bilis nun. That's the fastest spacecraft that we've ever sent. Ten years. Right? But there's once, there, the, the biggest stars in the universe can swallow the entire solar system. Wow! Just like that. Sabi ito yung palagay. Right? Wrap your head around that. Think about that. Try to wrap your head around it. How big that is, right? Right? Now here's the thing. The Bible says, the Lord breathes out stars. Wrap your head around that. Because these biggest stars that would swallow up an ent our entire solar system, it's not just one. There's billions upon billions upon billions upon billions upon trillions of them. Wrap your head around that. And the Bible says the Lord breathes out stars and calls each of them by name. Because because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Tapos ang lakas ng loob natin pagsabihan ng Panginoon as if we know more. Right? Right? Wrap your head around that and then the next time you pray, try to lecture God. Lord, I know better than you with what to do with my life. Hmm? Sa totoo lang, tinan niyo yung creation ni Lord, at tahinig na lang. Bakit? You just stand in awe. Wala kang masasabi. Huh? Ano niya ka lang? Huh? Maybe the next time we talk to the Lord, Maybe we can apply a little humility and a lot of listening here. Maybe that's why most of us, we keep on complaining that we haven't heard from the Lord. Because we don't listen in the first place. We don't try to listen. We keep on... We keep on repeating our prayers as if as if repeating and repeating paulit ulit na prayers has more value. You know? As if mas mahalaga ka pag paulit, 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 paulit. Hmm? Right? Maybe we should just listen and stand in awe of who God is. Maybe that's enough. You know? Third thing. Marks of a wise man. Courage. 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 Joshua chapter 1. Let me just read Joshua chapter 1. Oops. Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Okay. So, ito po ah. 
Si Joshua po is yung assistant ni Moses. Right? He was the assistant of Moses. And so here goes. They were about to enter the promised land. And the story goes after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with you, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and be very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it from the right or to the left that you may be successful in uh, wherever you go keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the lord your god is will be with you wherever you go now the theme that keeps on repeating here is be strong and courageous be strong and courageous be strong and courageous but there's another theme that repeats it says here keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in it then you will be prosperous and successful Right? That repeats. Keep reading. Keep these commandments. Keep the book of the law. Saan pa tayo nakakita ng ganun? Ah, doon sa ating verse for this today. Proverbs 6, verse 20 to 23. May connect po yun. Saan po yung connect, connect niya? Sabi niya dito, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Tie them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching of light. I guess it's saying. Eh? I guess it's saying. Right? Wisdom, or sorry, courage is directly connected to wisdom. Courage is directly connected to meditating upon the word. Right? That means the word, be strong and courageous. Meditate on the word, be strong and courageous. Keep the book of the law, be strong and courageous. Do not let this book of the law depart from you. Gets you? Bakit? Kasi ang dami niya harapin ni Joshua eh. Ang dami niya harapin eh. Ilang kingdoms yun na mababangis. Alright? Pwede siyang panghinaan ng loob. Saan siyang kukuha ng be strong and courageous niya? Doon saan? Sa word. Sa word. That's where you get your courage. That's where you get your strength. How often do you read the Word of God? How often do we read the Word of the Lord? How often do we read? How often? Do we get strength from it? And then we wonder kung bakit lagi nang takot. Okay? A wise man knows where to get strength from. Why? Right? Because in this life, 
If you're a Christian, we're at war. What does the Bible say? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities. Yeah, against rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. What does that mean? Tayo po, there is another world. Right? This, this thing, this thing, yes, this is real, this is true. But meron pong spiritual world. Wherein if you're a true believer, automatic threat ka. Nagets you po ba yun? There is a spiritual world that exists. And in these in this world, this is the realm of angels and demons. Right? And this world is true. It's just as real as this, as me, as you. Puto po yun. Bible says that. And before you became a follower of Jesus, bago po tayo naging follower na, ng Panginoon, nasan po tayo? Nasa mundo. Nandun po tayo, hampi po tayo ng ni Satanas. Alright? So kung kakampi ka ni Satanas, alaga ka nun. Tama? But the moment you became a true follower of Jesus, the moment you became a Christian, you switched sides. Automatic now, you are in God's camp. So now, automatic, you are a what? A threat. You're a threat. Ibig sabihin, automatic, kalaban ka na ng mga demonyo. Ha? Alright? Hello, boo. <laughs> automatic. Our struggle now, this is in the Bible, our struggle now is not against flesh and blood. But against what? Against spiritual forces. So huwag kang matakot, uh, huwag kang magulat kapag may pumunta sa'yo, okay? If you're a Christian, huwag kang matakot if biglang may, may pumunta sa'yo na nagpapatulong magpalaya sa demonyo. Pag kaming pumunta dito ang poses na tao, how many of us would take this man? And how many of us here would run? Paki, paki ano po? Pakitanong sa isipan ninyo, ha? Pag meron ba pumunta sa akin na tao na poses, okay? At mag nagre-request na kailangan mo magkalayas ng demonyo. Ako ba ay tatayo o ako ba ay tatakbo? Okay. Ask yourself that. Kapag meron bang uh, alabawa, meron bang kaparamdam, mga ano, ganyan, mga, mga you know, spirits. Ask yourself, ako ba ay tatayo o ako ba ay tatakbo? Because here's, here's the thing. The Bible says, my struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against authorities, against forces in the heavenly realms. Our struggle, that means you have to make war. Hmm? If you look at Jesus' ministry, and that is the apostles' ministry after Jesus went to heaven, one of the common things, one of the Always nangyayari. They always have to cast out. Always have to cast out. And lagi, halos kung saan sila pumupunta, lagi may pinapalayas ng, you know, may possess, may ganyan, 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 ganyan. It's part of it. It's part of who we are. It's part of our ministry. It's part of what we do. Why? Because we're followers of Jesus and we're against. We are not of this earth. We are citizens of heaven. So that's part of it. That's why the Bible says, Pansinin niyo to ah, alam niyo full armor of God. You know, you know that. You know that, that verse, the full armor of God. Let's, ano, let's go through it one by one. Okay? What is that? Breastplate of righteousness. Alright? Helmet 
of salvation. Belt of truth. Right? And then what? Feet or the, the, no, the, the shoes to carry the gospel. Right? Shield of faith. And what else? Sword of the spirit. Nice. Now ask yourself this question. Why is there no armor for the back? Gigera ka, di ba? Bakit walang protection for your back? Wala sinabing backplate of whatever. No, no, no. Never said that. There's nothing for the back. Why? Yes, he got us. He's got our back. But here's the thing. You cannot retreat. Meaning, you can't run away. If you turn your back and run, kapag tumalikod ka from the battle at tumakbo, wala kang protection. Yes. Hindi tayo pwedeng tumakbo. Yeah. The Bible says, be strong and be courageous. At that time, he was saying that to Joshua before they were to enter the promised land and conquer these fierce kingdoms. Now, in our time, the Bible says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against authorities, against spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. What is that? Against Satan and his demons. That's but our struggle is. That's why we have to be strong and be courageous. That's why we put on the full armor of God. That's why when we say that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, we say that standing up and holding our ground. We don't say that while running away. Hindi yung Ay, ang dami na nangyari! Takbo! Bring your zeros in even using the word. It's not that. You take your stand. You hold your ground. And you say that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Now you have the full armor for me. You're not saying that, Oi, hmm, malakas ako, ako si Superman. Hindi po. You're saying that, Hey, Oi, God has my back. God lives in me. Wala kang binatbat sa Diyos. With that, in Jesus' name, wala kang binatbat. Wala mo talaga. Yes? Yes? Be strong and be courageous. Right? Be strong and be courageous. Arm yourself. Know God's word. Be humble. Okay? Be humble. Know it. Right? Now, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? What is the difference between knowledge? Madalas na papagbalik na napapaganayan eh, napapag napabalik tayo. Alam mo yun? Knowledge and wisdom na nalilito, nakalito siya paminsan. So what's the difference? Let me just read this to you. Knowledge is the accumulation of facts and data that you have learned about, right? That you have learned about or experienced. It is being aware of something and having information. That's knowledge. Knowledge is really about facts and ideas that we acquire through study, research, investigation, observation, and experience. So knowledge is data. Kalaman. Wisdom is the ability to discern and judge which aspects of that knowledge are true 
right, lasting, and applicable to your life. It's the, uh, it's the ability to apply that knowledge to the greater scheme of life. It's also deeper, knowing the meaning or reason about knowing why something is and what it means to your life. Sa Tagalog po, knowledge is kaalaman, wisdom is karunungan. Anong kaibahan? Kasi after kong binasa yun, mas nalito ko lalo. <laughs> Panglito lang po yun, tinitingnan ko lang. Kayo. Now, here's the thing, meron akong kwento. Meron akong ano, meron akong kwento. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Hindi na ako lang, magising kayo eh. Ay, meron akong kwento. A few years ago, meron kayo nabalitaan na nag-crash na airplane na sa, sa New York. This is in, is it New York? Pala Hudson, Hudson River. In the US, alright? Meron nag-crash na airplane sa river. Nabalitaan niyo. Tapos walang namatay. Yan si Tom Hanks. May movie nun. Si Tom Hanks yun. Pero si Tom Hanks yung actor ha. Hindi siya talaga. <laughs> Joke lang. Si, si Tom Hanks yung movie. The, the movie is called Sully. Ay? Okay? Sully. The movie is called Sully. Now I saw that when it happened. Nung nangyari pa lang yun. Nakita ko kagawin sa Newsweek ko. Uy, may bumagsak. Kanyang ganyan. Lahat sila buhay. Kung napanood niyo yung movie. Ito spoiler alert. Right? <laughs> Now, basically, this is what happened. Take off sila. Shhh. Take off yung aeroplano. Pag take off nilang ganun, mga isa, dalawang minuto pa lang, biglang may bird strike. Merong naramdaman yung piloto na biglang, bigla silang sinalubong ng mga ibon. Tapos may mga ibon na nakapasok doon sa engine. Sumabog yung engine. Nawalan sila ng engines. Right? Nawala sila ng engine. Na itong mga pilotong to, mga biyasang-biyasa sila at ang grabe-grabe yung lawak na experience nila. Alright? In short, they had a lot of knowledge. Alright? They knew, they, they were trained. They had thousands of hours flying already that aircraft. Alright? At hindi lang yun. Meron pang control tower. Alright? Na sinasabi sa kanila kung ano yung mga options nila kung ano pwede nila gawin. Yung sabi ng control tower, Oy, baka pwede kang mag-land dito sa ganitong airport. Pwede kang mag-land sa ganitong airport. Pwede may airport na ganito, ganyan-ganyan. Pwede kayong ano, manami kayong pwede gawin. So in short, ang daming information. Ang daming information. Ang daming nilang options. But here's the thing. The pilot, an old guy, who's had a lot of experience flying, He took all this information in and weighed everything. And then all of a sudden, he decided, he said, Nako, wala tayong panahon mag-landing doon sa isang airport na yun. Wala din tayong panahon mag-landing doon sa isang airport na yun. Wala din tayong panahon mag-landing. Kahit na dala ng dada lahat nung, nung ano, air control, sana niya, Oy, pwede kayong ganyan, 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 ganyan. Siya, ang bilis niya mag-ano, mag, mag-isip, wala tayong, skalmado lang siya. Right? This is knowing that he has like probably 100 plus passengers on that plane who will die pag nagkamali siya ng decision. And taking in all these factors, okay, all this, right, he decided na, uy, sandali, merong malapit na river. In fact, nandun sila malapit na malapit sa river. Tapos ang inaisip niya, mag-landing sa river. Naisip niya mag-landing sa river. Uy, uh, mag-landing sa river. Kasi mag-landing sa river. Tapos ano pa nun ha? Winter, malamig. So yun naisip niya. Ano ginawa niya? Mag-landing siya sa river. And then he pulled off that landing with really great skill. Shhh. Para siyang mas smooth pa kung nag-land, kesa kung nag-landing sila dun sa Tapos ano, talagang bumbo yung aeroplano. Pag nakita mo yung picture ng aeroplano, you can search that on Google. Google. It's called The Miracle on the Hudson. The Hudson River. It's a, it was called a miracle. Alright? So, buo yung aeroplano. Buo yung aeroplano. 
kita niya sa ano sa picture book. Alam mo ilan namatay? Ala. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. You may know so many things. Right? You may know so many things. Right? But knowing how to use the information. Dun sa situation mo. Yun po ang karunungan. Yung kaalaman, yung mga tatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands, as David your father did, I will give you a long life. So basically, in a nutshell, ang nangyari po, si Solomon, after siya naging king, he offered sacrifices to the Lord, and then the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and then the Lord asked Solomon, sabi niya kay Solomon, anong gusto mo, bibigay ko sa iyo kahit ano. At ang sabi ni Solomon, bigyan mo ko ng karunungan, wisdom. Kasi ako ay isang bata lamang at wala akong alam kung paano maging hari. Natuwa ang Panginoon sa kanya. Sabi, sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, dahil yan ang sinainingi mo sa akin. Gagawin kita pinaka-wise na tao sa balat ng lupa. At hindi lang yan, bigyan kita ng yaman, bigyan kita ng, ng mahabang buhay, I will secure your kingdom. Okay? Nice, right? If you had a dream and God asks you what you want, what would you ask? Sabi ng, sabi ng harp ng wife ko, harp daw. <laughs> Thank you for being honest here. <laughs> what would you ask if God appeared to you in a dream now and said, Sabi niya, wisdom. Natuwa ang Panginoon. Binigay pa lahat. O, di ba? Tawag doon, jackpot. Pangkabuhayan, showpiece. Kala niya na, ano, tingin. Fast forward. Fast forward. Israel becomes prosperous. That was called the golden age of Israel. At that time, silver was so common in Israel. Nang sabi nga nung panahon na yun, silver was as common as stones. Ganun ka grabe yung ekonomiya ng Israel. Yung mga ibang hari pumupunta sa Israel para magbigay ng tribute kay Solomon. Grabe ang yaman ng Israel. Because of Solomon's wisdom. But fast forward, right? Later in life, Solomon begins to marry so many women. Dami niyang asawa. Hindi na asawa, pati mistresses, concubines. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Oh, di ba? Isang asawa lang, mahirap na eh. Siya ka niya, 700. Sorry. <laughs> 700? Di ba? Gusto niyo nun? 700 na wife? 300 na concubines? Di ba? Ang hirap ng gano'n. Ang dami mong misis. <laughs> 700 wives and 300 concubines. My goodness. Right? And what happened during the, the later part of Solomon's life? Because, because he had a lot of wives. These wives led him astray. And Solomon began to worship other gods, false gods. He began to build temples to false gods. At ang sinabi, remember what, what God said to him in his dream. Sabi niya, and if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did. Right? The Lord made a similar promise to David. If you and your descendants would keep my commands. Right? 
there will always be a king on the throne of Israel from your life. And that's what, what God told David as well. But Solomon did not keep the commandments. Because of that, God brought trouble on his family and on his kingdom. Right after he died, gulo ka again. Actually, hindi pa siya patay, gulo na eh. Okay? Hinati na rin Lord yung kingdom eh. Boy pa si Solomon nun eh. Nung ano, nung uh, there was a prophet who came to Jeroboam, if you know Jeroboam. And then the prophet said, you will have ten tribes of Israel. Right? And then Solomon heard this. He tried to get Jeroboam killed. So Jeroboam fled. Right? But then after Solomon died, Jeroboam came back and he became king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And Solomon's son, Rehoboam, well, diba? para sila magkapatid, pero hindi po sila magkapatid, para sa sila may boam. <laughs> so, hindi sila magkapatid, pero si, nagkahiwalay po yung kingdom of Israel. And Israel has never recovered from that. Ever. Hmm? Ganun ka grabe yung impact. What went wrong with Solomon? He asked for wisdom. He's considered the wisest person who ever lived. To the point na sinabi ng Panginoon that, sabi ng Panginoon dito ha, moreover, uh, sabi ng I will give you what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Ibig sabihin, sa sobrang wise mo, wala nang tao mas wise pa sa'yo before you, at wala nang magiging mas wise pa sa'yo after you. Whoa. Grabe, wise talaga si Solomon. What went wrong? He had everything. What went wrong? Allow me to play with this a little bit. What if Solomon did not ask for wisdom? What if wisdom was not the best thing that he could have asked for? What if? What if Solomon said this? What if he said, you know, Lord, I just want you. What if it was that simple? What if Solomon said, I don't, I don't care about all this, all the wealth, everything, even wisdom. I don't care about it. I just want you. Because if I don't have you, I don't have anything. Even with that. What Solomon just said, you know what, Lord? I just want your presence. I just want you to be with me. I don't care if you take away my kingdom. I don't care if you take away everything. I just want you. Your presence is here. What if he said that? Think about it. How different would it have been? Maybe Solomon would have never strayed. Right? Maybe Solomon would have never run away from God. You now we're talking about wisdom tonight. And we're, we're, we've been discussing that wisdom is not, you know, one of the highest things that you can ever be. Want to get, want to achieve. But here's the thing. Even wisdom. Even wisdom is nothing if you don't have the Lord. If God is not real here, if you're just coming to church because, you know, because you come to church, pero sa totoo lang, 
hindi naman talaga totoo yung Panginoon sa puso mo. You know, in your private life, you know, when you're alone, God is not there. God is not within your heart. And everything is just external. You can get wisdom, but if you have, don't have the presence of the Lord, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, is a testament to that. Follow wisdom, get wisdom as much as you can get. But if you don't have the Lord, the Lord is not real in your life. If you're a fake Christian, if you're just a Christian by label or a Christian by convenience. What do I mean Christian by convenience? Because it's fashionable. I Christian ako kasi, you know, pumunta sa church ko, may mga artista. Or Christian ako kasi, ano, dami ako lang kuha sa church or something. You know? If you are not a true believer of God, you can fool the people around you, but you can never fool the Lord. You can never fool the Lord. It has to be real here first. The presence of God is the most important thing that you can have over everything. If you don't have the presence of the Lord, you can have the entire world, and it would still be nothing. It would still be worth it. So if you want wisdom, real wisdom, ask God for His presence. Ask Him for His presence. Ask that He will be real to you. That He will be true here. That He will make you true. Ask Him that. And then see how your life changes. The Lord is generous. You can never ask Him. You can never out give God. Especially when you ask for His presence. That is actually something that the Lord wants to give. Sometimes you keep on asking so many things from God. Accept His presence. God wants nothing more than to give you His presence. Bakla hindi natin? Bak hindi yun yung hindi natin sa kanya? And then see how your life changes. And then see how the things in your life change. How your relationship changes. How everything in your life changes. Because God's presence is with you. Amen. Yeah. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful evening that you have given us. We thank you, Lord God, because we believe, Lord God, that you are with us here right now. And we welcome you, Lord God. We welcome your presence. Thank you, Lord God, because we know that in this gathering, you our presence, you, the God of the universe, who created the moon, the sun, and all the stars, who breathes out stars by name. Lord, you are here with us this evening. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would minister, that you would speak to each heart here tonight. You have the power to change hearts. You have the power to change minds. You have the power to change lives. We ask for wisdom, Lord God, but most importantly, we ask for your presence. We ask that you would make us aware of your presence. We ask that we would desire your presence each and every day so that we may know you truly, so that we may know you deeply. And we thank you, Lord God, because 
you are with us and you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And we praise you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sabi sa'yo, namiss kita eh. Grabe, no? Nakapanindig ba lang hibo, no? Thank you po. Palakpakan po natin, Preacher Hans. Thank you po. Amen. Ano yung nga naman, uh, Preacher Hans? Ano yung tatlo? Ano po yung tatlo? Ano sa wisdom? Uh, humility, quick to listen, and nanay sila yung patlo. Ay, nakaano ka pala, nagpipray ka pala na. <laughs> courage, di ba? No? Tatlo, no? Humility, quick to listen, and courage. Galing, no? Galing po. Hindi na ako masyadong dadaldal. Baka, ano eh, di ba? No? Sige po, ano tayo sa memory verse natin for the week? Ito po yung first day natin mag-memorize. At uh, maganda naman po yung verse natin for tonight, no? For, the, for this week. Okay po, lahat po ba mayroon ng uh, bulletin? Okay po, basahin po natin yung memory verse natin ng tatlong beses. Tapos try po natin kung meron na nakamemories. Okay, one, two, begin. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of words, lest any man should boast. Pangalawa. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of words, lest any man should boast. Pangatlo. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ano pa rin yung boast, no? Diba? Okay. Sino pong gustong maulang? Nanay Saling! <laughs> nanay, magbasa ka na nanay. <laughs> Ang galing na rin sa intonation pa sa dulo. Unless any man should boast. Okay. Medyo po, Pastor Gani, medyo, ano po yan, medyo na-memorize mo na yan. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. By grace are you saved to faith, but not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Works as any man should boast. Amen. Banda po dito. Nanit. Okay, parang may pipa niya. Dito, may gano'n. Dito. dito po sa tapat natin dito, yung mga ano po dito, couple natin. Meron po bang, ay ba sa'yo nila lang po, isa sa'yo niya. Amen. Tagalog po. Tagalog tayo. Mabilis lang naman po. Ano? Tagalog. Tatong beses natin basahin. Tapos, sige, try na ako rin. Mamemorize ko yung mayroon ng Tagalog. Sariling wika, nahihirapan. No? Sige po, basahin po natin tatong beses. One, two, bigi. Epeso, dalawa, walo, at siyam. Sapagkat sa biyaya, kayo'y nangaligtas sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya at ito'y hindi sa inyong sarili. Ito'y kaloob ng Diyos, hindi sa pamamagitan ng mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Pangalawa, sapagkat sa biyaya kayo'y nangaligtas sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya at ito'y hindi sa inyong sarili, ito'y kaloob ng Diyos, hindi sa pamamagitan ng mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Pangalawa, Sapagkat sa biyaya, ikayo'y nangaligtas sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya at ito'y hindi sa inyong sarili, ito'y kaloob ng Diyos, hindi sa pamamagitan ng mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. 
No? Pero ang sarap naman na niya, no? Nung uh, gusto niyang sabihin sa atin sa Tagalog. Sa English naman, mas mabiling, ano, mas mabilis i-memorize na. Dito, mapagmapuri. Oh, kita, ang galing, no? Ano pa ba? Map, uh, pamamagitan, di na natural lang sa atin. Yun. Sige po, nalang sa din. Namiss ko yung boxes pa lang. Kaya <laughs> Kala ko mag-play ng harp? Ah, hindi ba? Kala ko mag-play. Minamadali ko pa naman ito. Di ba? <laughs> okay po, picture lang po natin. Mga cellphone natin. Oh, para memorize po natin. Para pag atin natin bukas, ma-recite na natin ng maanos. Di ba? Okay, tawagin po natin ating pastor. Pastor Johnny Tuniso. Ano yung pastor? Tatlo? Humility, Tuniso, and Carriage. Ito kayo po sa atin lahat. Pagkakaroon po ang Panginoon. And it's a full pack uh, for tonight. No? Maraming, uh, maraming tayo natutunan ano po, regarding sa uh, book of Proverbs. And at the same time, ang book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 21. Ano po ay patuloy natin yung hindi lang basta ay uh, napapakinggan, kundi makita sa ating buhay at maibahagi din po natin sa iba. Ilan po sa mga paalala po natin po, let's continue to pray po sa complete recovery ni Pastor Redel. Katulad niya po na sinabi sa inyo kanina, si, siya po ay nakauwi na, no, na ilabas na sa hospital for uh, five, uh, almost one week po na nakonfine sa hospital. It is because of uh, the mild stroke, no, dahil sa, ano, sa, sa atin niya sa sobrang pag-iisip. <laughs> But anyway, dahil nga po meron mga, meron na rin siya mga uh, karamdamang, yun nga, mataas yung uric acid niya, no. Kaya patuloy po natin siya ipanalangin. At kailangan po magpa-therapy at the same time yung maintenance po ng gamit niya. So ipanalangin po natin patuloy si Pastor Rodel. Kakibat po niya, panalangin po natin ating outreach sa Montalban, sa mga power preachers and pastors ay magpipreach po doon sa ngayon dahil po si Pastor Rodel ay uh, pag, uh, ano mo, kailangan mo makarecover. Ano po? So yan, at uh, maganda lang po yung nangyayari doon at the same time yung uh, uh, gawain natin doon ay uh, malago naman po. So panalangin din po natin gawain natin dyan. Dito po sa Cruz na Ligas, panalangin din po natin yan sa panguna po niya, uh, Preacher uh, Majesty and Ati Shirley. Yun po. E, e, uh, sa mangyayari po within this week or uh, this coming uh, uh, July 21 ay yung ating Pacquiao Sunday. So pag-pray po natin yan, naka, nakabili na po tayo ng pay-per-view, ready na po tayo dyan. No? Pag-pray niyo po yung ilang uh, uh, pangailangan din natin dito. And of course, hindi lang po basta yung Uh, laban na yun, kundi yung purpose natin to, to share the word of God yun sa mga pupunta rito, especially sa mga kalalakihan. Ano po? Uh, yun nga maganda dyan, hindi na natin kailangan pang ano, ano, mag-invita, magpaskill ka lang dyan. Pupunta na lahat dito yan. No? Kaya, and we do that for free. no We do that for free. Dito po sa ating simbahan, hindi lang yung free uh, pay-per-view, kundi free din yung food. no Libre rin yung, libre rin yung pagkain. So, Um, pagka naaga-aga ka pa rito, libre rin yung gupit, no? Kasi may may gupit po 8 to 10, no? 8 AM to 10. So libre lahat 'yan kaya ano, sang ka pa. Sakay na. Super friendly. <laughs> so, yan po yung panalangin po natin yan. Pang 19. Ano, na beses na nating ginagawa yan since uh, uh, ginawa nating outreach po yung ano, Pacquiao Sunday. So panalangin po natin yan. Yang mga yan, panalangin po natin ang ating pastor. Uh, sa Amerika kasama si Denise, almost sa uh, talagang ano, halos walang pahinga. Panalangin natin ng alakas ang physical ano po, at uh, gabay ng Panginoon sa kanyang pagdadrive. Kanyang naman po pagdadrive ang ating pastor. So panalangin po natin yan. Sila Ma'am Christine po and Debbie ay uh, susunod po doon this coming 21 din. Ano? So panalangin din po natin ang uh, gabay ng Panginoon dyan. Ang ating pong uh, Bible School every Monday and Saturday, uh, Tuesday. Ay maganda po nangyayari. We have 21 students na naka-enroll po from level 1, level 2, and level 3. Yun po ay nakakatatlong linggo na tayo at free po ang Panginoon at uh, patuloy po itong ginagamit ng Panginoon para sa ating pong, uh, 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 pag-equip ng mga leaders. And po, don't forget to uh, teach your one, no? yung one is to one, especially your lesson. 
Lesson po ay nandito, kunin niyo lang po yan diyan tapos uh, patuloy po nating turuan ng ating one is two. Ano po? So, yan po ang ating ilang paalala. Magandang magandang gabi sa atin lahat. Manalangin po tayo sa gabi po. Maraming salamat, Takilang Diyos. Pinupuri ka namin dahil napakabuti mo sa aming buhay. Salamat po kay Preacher Hans na ginamit mo sa gabi ito. Tunay nga po, Panginoon, na uh, ang iyong uh, inimpart sa amin na karunungan ay nawa po, Panginoon, hindi mabaliwala. Nawa po ay patuli namin itong mga gamit na uh, may kaluwalhatian sa inyong harap. Patuloy pong gabayan si Hans, kasama po si Joan. Ikaw po ang patuloy na magbibigay uh, sa kanila ng gabay at katalinuhan, even Panginoon, provision mo sa kanila pong pamilya. Salamat po ng marami, dakilang Diyos. Papatnubayan po ang aming pansamantalang pag-uwi. Tataglayin po namin ang basbas sa aming biyaya. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen and Amen. Magandang magandang gabi po sa ating lahat at uh, makita-kita po tayo bukas. Si Preacher Al J naman po ang ating speaker tomorrow. God bless you all. Opo. Oh, yung ano, yung bigay, no? Doon kami napunta. Saan doon kami napunta? Eh, tinatanong ka na ako nga kayo sa akin niya. Medyo... Sunday ba yan? Sunday. Sarap din ang ano nila. Stop. Wala nga. Walang crash. Walang crash. Ay, thank you, Hans. Thank you. Kising-kising ka, ha? Thank you.